and a very warm welcome once again to all of you to another edition of our literary program Face to Face. Well, today we are once again in the midst of a very great and good company. But before I go ahead and introduce our guest to you, let me just tell you once again about this great land, this great place, the state of Meghalaya and Shillong in particular. One is amazed, isn't it, to see the richness of poetry written in a small place like Shillong and that too in the English language. Such a wealth, of course, can be attributed to many factors, many facets, not forgetting the natural surrounding, the places of scenic beauty that we find uh, all around us, especially in Shillong, in Meghalaya, more so. And what also cannot be denied is the fact that this land is very rich in oral uh, traditions, in myths, in legends, in folklores of the inhabitants of the people in the state as well. And these myths, these legends, these oral traditions have often found their ways in a number of creative works and the creativity of poets uh, when they write their poetry. And one such person who has continued to uphold uh, this tradition since the 80s, I should say, is Robin S. Nangom. And he is, of course, from the state of Manipur, and uh, he has been living in Shillong uh, now for three decades, for a little over three decades, and has been writing what he holds uh, closest to his heart, and for which he has been recognized in different arenas, different platforms. So there you have it, my dear friends and uh, viewers there. Our guest today in this literary program is none other than Robin S. Nangom who is presently a faculty in the Department of English, Northeastern Hill University. A very good evening to you. Good evening. And a warm welcome uh, to our program. It's a pleasure, it's an honor to finally have you in our literary program. And thank you so much for taking your time out and for being with Durdashan Shillong and for being able to speak to us in this face-to-face -face interview that we have with you. So, uh, Sir Robin, if I can take you firstly down memory lane, and uh, if you could tell us a little bit about you, because, uh, you know, uh, what, what has been uh, where and what has been your early education and uh, what really brought you to Shillong? Because originally, as I believe, you are not from this place, you are from Manipur. So if you can just mm -hmm. uh, delve into memory lane right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I came to Shillong in 1975 uh, uh, after I finished my high school there in Infal and uh, uh, my parents uh, were a little worried I think about uh, me uh, becoming you know a wastrel <laughs> you know so uh, they sent me to Shillong for further studies. Uh, my, of course, my uh, uh, siblings, my uh, two elder brothers and a sister also studied here in colleges in Shillong. Uh, and I have stayed on ever since in Shillong. Uh, and I used to uh, talk about myself as living in some kind of a self-imposed exile in, in Shillong. Um, uh, and uh, mm, I, 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 I double in poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, I was about 11 or 12 years old when I first wrote my first uh, faint line. And, I was uh, young and and um, and foolish. Now, of course, I'm old and foolish <laughs> still. <laughs> so, uh, I think I wanted to uh, explore the world. I mean, I, you know, I was caught in the flush of youth, and I wanted to explore the world by writing, you know, uh, ornate and uh, sentimental poetry. You know. I thought, you know, life was ignoring me and, and uh, I thought I could engage the attention of uh, like-minded hearts by writing friendly and, and, and soft-hearted, you know, you know, poetry. So, uh, 
my poems were inspired by romances and adventure stories uh, such as the thousand and one nights in the Arabian nights but um, it was essentially very dreamy eyed uh, adolescent stuff I think I, I still haven't grown out of it <laughs> you know uh, one favorite poem of mine began with these lines of, uh, and the boy stood on the burning deck okay um, of course, that world, that well-meaning world is no longer recognizable now. Uh, I'm talking about Manipur, you know, the sacred landmarks of, 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 of childhood have disappeared. <clears throat> uh, and Manipur, my native place, um, you know, is in a state of anarchy. And I think my poetry springs from the the cruel contra contradictions of, 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 of that land. You know, Manipur boasts of its talents in, in sports and in, in theatre and cinema and dance, you know. But uh, how could uh, one trust uh, one's own people, you know, when they have only entrusted corruption, uh, AIDS, terrorism and, and, and drugs to their children? So, uh, uh, I think my, you know, my, my poetry, you know, reflects reflects that, you know, the 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 the, the, the social condition, you know, you know, the, the anarchy that I'm, right, I'm, I'm talking right, about. You know. uh, like I said before, we go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let us talk about the happy days because you were there uh, till which uh, class, uh, which uh, till which uh, standard were you there in Manipur? Let's talk about the happy days mm. of Manipur when you were a boy, mm. when you were a little child. Mm. How were those days in Manipur then and how much you feel now has it changed? Let's talk about the happy moments thereon, you know, because like every other child, you must have gone fishing, you must have done, done a lot of pranks, you must mm. have had your days of happiness there. Mm -hmm. But somehow things have changed with time. We'll, yes. we'll reflect on that a little bit later. Let's okay. talk of the happy moments now, sir. Uh, Mm, I think uh, childhood, uh, I'm sure it's true of many people, uh, you know, uh, childhood y y usually uh, uh, is, is happier, you know, before the adult world you know, right. takes over. Mm -hmm. So, but, but uh, when it comes to a place like Manipur, I think, you know, the, maybe the, maybe, maybe the, 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 the um, you know, uh, um, the unhappy politics, the 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 um, the, the violence that we are familiar with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're all familiar with, uh, has always been under the surface. And maybe as a child, maybe you know, maybe, maybe I, I didn't see it. You know. Okay, the undercurrents. The undercurrents, you know, yeah. maybe, mm -hmm. you know. So, but uh, relatively, I think my my, my childhood childhood. Uh, I mean, I can I can describe it as 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 happy, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I'll just uh, read. This is a, a poem written in retrospect, actually. Okay. You know, uh, so it's titled The Homeland I Left. Uh, homeland I left one sultry day of adolescence. Why do you keep your distance? I cannot recall your intimate voices of night, nor connect living faces with names. The childhood fragrance of your dank earth is elusive. Cousin Joy died young, friend Tomba still in jail. Uh, do you remember, naked unaware, we made muddy, our lukewarm river, who gave us sores in return? How we enacted our truant dramas, in houses of bushes on our hillock, smoking berries and playing dirty little games. How we loved the colourful festivals and catching fish from stagnant pools. You were rough in your street fights. We were young, we were curious about women. But how we flew kites, planted flowers and tended chicken. How we hunted small game in the rice fields and covered every lane of Imphal on bicycles, making passes at almost every girl. I hear a wicked war 
is now waged on our soil and gory bodies dragged unceremoniously through our rice fields. That they, they have dropped the word shame from, from, from the vocabulary and the new, newly rich are ruling our homes. I hear that freedom comes there only when escorted by armed men. I asked you the question and you answered me through the words of this poem that you have written, as you said, in retrospect, but then that was how it was, your childhood. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing that with us. Now, um, let us now come to your work, um, because you said by the age, I think, 11 or so, mm -hmm. you started, uh, you know, delving yourself into writing. Yes. And, uh, but uh, one area that you have now focused is, uh, you know, exploring the folk culture, the, the f folkloric traditions of Meghalaya. Now, what captured your interest? Uh, not just Meghalaya, I think you bring in your, uh, your home state, your Manipur's context also here. So what mm -hmm. captured you into folklore, folk traditions? I think it's, it's quite inevitable, uh, you know, for example, you know, not, not just uh, 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 the folk, folk uh, tradition, but, uh, you know, there would be a predominance of uh, images uh, of nature and the hills, right. you know, you know, mm -hmm. you know it, it, is, it, it, is my, it is my reality, my mm -hmm. subjective reality, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, you have, you, you, one would be writing about the hills when you're living in the hills. And uh, in, 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 in Shillong, of course, in, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, one one would be attracted to 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 to, to nature. I mean, you, you, I mean, you know, uh, I mean that, that that is that is quite natural. Absolutely. And uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, and uh, you would be looking for 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 stories, uh, and and of course, you know, would. You know the kasis with the rich oral literature. Uh, right. You know, uh, uh, is something that uh, one would be curious about. You know, about about the about the stories of the kasis, and and of course my my kasi friends have been uh, are the ones, of course, who who, who told me their stories. Mm -hmm. uh, so th so it, this is this would be this is this is my reality, and this is my subjective reality. So uh, talking about the folk world, about nature is a very important aspect of my poetry but you have so you have adopted both of them inside you and that gets reflected uh, uh, in your poems mm -hmm. so would you therefore say that it adds both to the excitement as well as to the varieties to your poems mm. well uh, uh, regarding the excitement of course that would uh, depend on the on the uh, it's a subjective element it's a definitely. subjective yeah. element yeah. you know we, um, it's something that um, mm, you know one can't uh, uh, we're talking about felt experience you mm -hmm. know so so you know uh, i am not sure if 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 it is uh, I mean, the excite. If it if there is anything exciting in my poetry, that would for, that would, I think maybe that would for, be for the reader to decide, you know. Uh, but maybe for the if, if it has to do with pain or you know uh, or um, uh, or sadness, you know, you, you know. Um, I think uh, uh, sometimes it, it becomes some kind of. A, um, uh, some kind of purging, mm -hmm. actually, when, 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 when the poet writes about it, you know. Um, so, I, I don't know where my poetry is going to, you know. Uh, but that's how it should be, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think no creativity and no creative person should be bounded. Mm. I mean, the world is your canvas, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. entire stretch, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you look beyond the horizon and more is your canvas. Nobody should mm -hmm. be bounded. True, true. Right? Yes. And yet sometimes we do find sometimes a gagging and, uh, you know, muzzling. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on this? Should creativity be muzzled? Should it be gagged? No, should I there be ample freedom for oneself, one's self-expression? Mm -hmm. 
I think if uh, if a writer is denied of his freedom, you know that that private space, you know, mm -hmm. uh, he uh, he will uh, you know uh, uh, die, in, in mm -hmm. metaphorically speaking, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I I'm often struck by what uh, you know um, Albert Camus, the the Nobel laureate, you know, uh, said about uh, the double challenge of truth and liberty. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, he said something about telling the truth about uh, about about what one knows. You know, you know. Again, it will be subjective, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, my own understanding of the truth. You know. So I have s mentioned elsewhere. Although you know, uh, I cannot speak for all the Nordic writers who write in English. But I have mentioned mentioned that the. Maybe the task of uh, literature of the Nordist, uh, the, the task that the literature of the Nordist must address is what uh, uh, what Albert Camus called the double challenge of truth and liberty. Okay. Truth, because what can the writer hope to accomplish now mm. except tell the truth? When the unspeakable is out there being enacted daily and quickly forgotten, quickly consigned to oblivion, and when cruel things are done, but never undone, uh, and when you know uh, we hear you know uh, only lies, you know you know uh, the world is being fed you know one-sided lies by by by, by all, all sorts of people, you know. So the writer can only tell the truth about what he knows, and maybe uh, because. Uh, Considering recent developments, uh, you know, in, in 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 the country, you know, maybe forces are always at work to write to rob the writer of his freedom. So liberty, freedom, is a necessary precondition, mm -hmm. which the writer perhaps has have, you know has to fight for, mm -hmm. in order to tell the truth that he knows. Freedom, I've always felt felt that is the lifeblood, you know, of of uh, of the writer's art, you know. Absolutely. So so so. So, so it's impossible. Mm -hmm. I mean, to answer your question, it's impossible to to gag the mm -hmm. writer. If he if he allows himself to be gagged, then mm -hmm. you know it will mean the death of his of, of, of his writing. Yes, yeah. yeah. He or she doesn't remain a writer anymore. True. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, how do you see poetry writing in this part of the country? Uh, you know, from the mainstream uh, tradition of uh, city-based cultures and mm. urbanized images, which marks. Uh, you know the poets and the poetry of uh, say other areas such as say Mumbai, Calcutta, mm. and the other. How how do you see the difference? What is the kind of difference that you have felt and uh, I think uh, to put it in, you know in in I mean uh, people of course I mean you know uh, there, there could be different uh, reactions, different interpretations. But I think what distinguishes the poetry of uh, the northeast. Even for you know people who write in English, mm -hmm. is that there is a lot of heart right. in their art. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good so, phrase. Yeah. Heart in their art. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, because uh, you know, the you know, uh, uh, and of course I'm making a very sweeping kind of a statement, sweeping generalization. The, the poets from the city, especially especially the you know, what is known as the Mumbai school of poetry, mm -hmm. uh, they they are very. They're highly accomplished uh, when it comes to the use of the language. You mm -hmm. know, you know I, I talked about their verbal wizardry. Okay. Know. But uh, but I, I find that uh, most of it is is passionless. You know, they seem to be uh, hiding or may seem seem to be a little emo uh, ashamed of their of their of their feelings. You know, you know. I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I I could be wrong. So. Uh, and uh, you know uh, uh, the poets from the from the northeast uh, they, they they have not been culturally you know they may be they may be uh, we, we we are all modernist writers you, mm -hmm. know, you know we are aware, uh, we, there's a lot of complexity in, in our in our in our work but we have we have not been culturally uprooted right while the city based poets mm -hmm. you know they 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 uh, most of them are you know are culturally uprooted you know mm -hmm. so so that 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 is the yeah that that yeah. thing that, that, that therein lies the difference. Mm. A very popular Kasi story about tragic lovers, star-crossed lovers, the story of Manik Raitong. Okay. So I have uh, I have written two 
two poems, mm -hmm. you know, which is based on the story. And uh, I have written it in the Chinese style, the Chinese okay. Chinese mode, you know. Okay. Uh, U Manik Raitong, an orphan youth, had an illicit affair with the king, the uh, same in, in, in Kasi, the king's wife. Uh, when the affair come, came to light, the king's court, you know, ordered Wu Raitong's death. Right. Yeah. Uh, at the end of autumn, sitting near the window, it is the ninth moon, and already a shiver runs down the hill. In calm solitude, I latch my door, thinking if I'll ever see plum blossoms again. Blinking among pines, the autumn stars, silk spun moonlight, and silver stream drowning stones. Laden people from day's end, bringing winter wood to the seams mansion. How sad is the lot of my friend Manik, spilling his heart from the seven mouths of his flute, even though he has dared to wear the flower of the seam. Any, 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 any more you would like to read? Yeah, from I, this, I, I just, yeah? I just I mm. think you know. There's a second part. I okay. think, and this, 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 this is, this is a. Uh, you know, relevant. You okay. know. It's titled Spring at Reboy. And okay. this is after after Manik's uh, passing, after his okay. death, I mean, after okay. his immolation. Mm. Winter withdraws quietly from the Reboy hill. Like white reeds to deck the late year's coffin, peach blossom fall in spring wind. Swept clean by spring wind, the hills, fog melting from the nestling hamlet, and green are the pines skirting it. Laughing children, on their way to meadows, men and women with ploughs before the industrious season. Because life falls like petals and death comes when least expected, none remembers the passing of Manik Raitong and how he planted his bamboo flute for earth to play music in spring. But cold, cold is the seam's heart and spring has not visited his garden. <laughs> January 1986, that's the date. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Neil Trapp. Uh, when some sojourner who stayed carry away the memory of a tremor and where the tar ends, poverty starts walking unclothed from the dirt roads, spilling like ancient rice wine until they find refuse in the cascades and unloosened raven tresses of, a, of your women. Seven huts of my solitude, my first love. Your rain, your wind, search my face for signs of guilt when I first disembarked. A fugitive fleeing from ties of blood and desire. You who harbored me like a shame mm -hmm. and demanded my consistency. I saw the years clutched within your flailing arms of lessening pines pleading with your errant people to return. But this is how the stuff of our dreams clings on to the city's will of the wisp. But I have stayed and watched your hours drip in sun and rain. The lips of your women are dark red as your wine of cherry and the heap unquenchable thirst upon my lips. You must be carrying a hurt inside you, isn't mm. it? No, because, because when I spoke to you right from the beginning, I can sense that, you know, that there is a deep-seated hurt, a pain inside you, which gets so much reflected in your works. Yeah. Share with us the pain today, sir. Why don't you speak about this pain today? Let, let us all hear this pain, because pain <laughs> also needs to be told sometimes. It shouldn't be too personal. True. Uh, and of course, I mean, you know, uh, I often used to talk about my poetry as some kind of a confessional, you know, and and uh, uh, and uh, I may not talk about it, but mm -hmm. uh, it uh, you know I write about it in in, in my in my in my poetry. Mm. I think uh, uh, the I think you know, and I'm not talking about myself, I, but uh, poets as as uh, you know a great poet like Pablo Neruda, he he talks about uh, this this uh, violence and you know and 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 bloodshed and pain you know in his poetry. The best poet, 
poetry, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, is 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 inspired by 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 uh, by you know by unhappy uh, tragic uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, incidents. Mm. W. H. Auden, uh, in his tribute uh, to W. Uh, to to, to to yet the Irish poet uh, said that Mad Ireland hurt you into poetry. Okay. So he's used the word hurt. Mm. Uh, I think poets do not consciously choose uh, choose to write about pain. You know, I mean, uh, they, 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 would, they would like to be happy. <laughs> I'm sure you know, but uh, write about happier things too. But uh, I often used to think about about pain and uh, tragedy and 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 and, and comedy. You know, or, or if you, if or you know, uh, uh, tragedy and, and happiness. Tragedy, I think, is something that uh, would come to you naturally, uninvited. You know, it's something that we have we, you would inherit. Mm -hmm. You know, naturally. I mean, you can't you can't say that you know uh, you know I can't I can't I I, mean, I, I, I I'm not, I'm going to keep tragedy away. Mm -hmm. It will come to you. Uh, Naturally uninvited. It's something that mankind has inherited. You know, right. you know. While while joy is something uh, very short-lived, of course, and it is something that perhaps we have to consciously create. As a person, as an individual, as a citizen, which are the areas you feel in our society? You know, the people, for the people in general, the youth more so in particular. Uh, you know, which are the areas that now? needs to change, needs to improve, which are those areas that bothers you, you know, something or the other always bothers because we are not, we are part of society and what is going on affects us, it bothers us, you know, we, we may not be able to do much about it, but it does bother us and we wish it would change. So therefore, what makes you anxious sometimes, you know, and what you hope would change in the days to come? It is... Uh you know, uh, it's difficult to 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 to, to pinpoint uh, you know a single cause because you know your priorities might 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 change. But I think something something which has which has been bothering me uh, for quite some time you know recently uh, is about uh, to use someone someone's phrase about the ecological suicide that we, that we're, we're committing. Uh, the rest, uh, okay, we talk about corruption, we talk about terrorism. These have become banal, actually, you know. You know, uh, it, 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 These are things maybe that, that we can do nothing about, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like uh, the younger people to be conscious of, uh, you know, of, of the, 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 the great uh, harm that we 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 we're doing to 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 to, to nature uh, mm -hmm. the, the way how we abuse nature but uh, again you know uh, it is something that should come from from i mean they they should be curious about 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 the world and i i i feel that in say in in university you know especially the humanities if you cannot uh, awaken the, uh, what keats said uh, the thinking principle in in in, in the young people then mm -hmm. then i think the humanities have uh, especially the humanities have have uh, perhaps have failed you know, right. you know to, to so so uh, th there's a very disturbing lack of curiosity in the young people I think we should we should be really concerned about about uh, the ecological suicide that we are committing. Mm. You know, so. mm. uh, you know I, I really I really align to this thought of yours because the wanton destruction of nature all around us. Mm -hmm. This is something that we have not grown up mm. seeing. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. true, I've been uh, born and brought up in mm -hmm. this place, and I've seen a much more greener mm -hmm. uh, place mm -hmm. than what I see mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And it pains me, it hurts me, and mm -hmm. it's good, sir, that you have brought up because uh, this is I think that our youth should make it a part of them, you know, mm -hmm, and take mm -hmm. care. It's now or never, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, all right. Uh, another thing, uh, Sir Robin, like you have also received a number of your awards. You know, you know, one uh, such award that I know of is the Udaya Bharati National Award for Poetry in the year 1994, mm -hmm. and the Katha Translation Prize that you also received in 1999. Mm -hmm. Besides other recognitions, of course, you know, other recognitions and uh, you know. So, so in this regard, tell us a little bit about uh, these awards and uh, you know. And in this context also, how important it is for uh, somebody's work to be recognized, you know, that one should get a platform, one should be recognized for one's mm. creative zeal. Firstly, mm. tell us about these recognitions of yours. I think maybe like, like everybody else, when uh, one began writing poetry and, and uh, has written, say, a considerable number of poems, you would like to see your book, right. hear, see your name in print uh -huh. and and maybe some kind of recognition, uh, uh, you know, uh, was, uh, you know, uh, was sought, you know, maybe. You know, uh, but uh, after a point, I think, uh, uh, I mean, I've forgotten completely about these awards. They're, they're not, they're not uh, really big awards in that sense, you know, but um, I think, but, but, uh, 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 after a point, uh, uh, what I mean, f f for example, you know, uh, uh, now you, mm -hmm. know, you know, in the present, I, I would be more concerned about writing, 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 continuing to write because there are so many, so many uh, things that, uh, as I mentioned, that that are trying to rob the writer of his freedom. It, it could, not just the, not just the. Uh, political uh, dispensation, but uh, you know, but uh, you know, uh, um, it's becoming increasingly difficult to be to de uh, to devote yourself entirely to 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 because of different different reasons, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because of your job, because of uh, you know your family or your you know. So, I think uh, what I'm most concerned about now is to is to is to is to write and to write well. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, it becomes more and more demanding, more difficult, and 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 if you stop doing the difficult thing, then your writing will suffer. Mm -hmm. If once it becomes easy, you know, you know, if you write, start start writing competent uh, competent poetry, uh, but not really inspired poetry, then you know, then uh, maybe that would that would uh, mean the end. You know, you know. So, so you you have to keep on doing the difficult thing. Mm -hmm. It has to be. It becomes more and more difficult, you know. Uh, you know, especially uh, when you think about when you read, when you discover discover uh, poets, you know, uh, from different parts of the world, you know, who, who write, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, wonderful poetry. You know, you would like to like to uh, emulate them. I mean, you like to. You, to be as 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 good as them, you know. so it becomes more and more difficult. Uh, so uh, uh, even even publishing for the sake of publishing, uh, or, or attending lit literary festivals, you know, they don't finally uh, matter or mean much if you can't if you can't do the difficult thing. Right. And and seeing your name in in, in books in, in print also doesn't not really mean much. Uh, I think what is more important is to be to be appreciated, uh, to be to be acknowledged by by fellow writers, by writers whom you appreciate, whom you admire. Right. Uh, because uh, publishing, uh, publishing, and even even uh, even um, you know getting re getting some kind of recognition is mm -hmm. is doable now. I mean, you know. Uh, Again, I'm not judging anyone, but uh, uh, there are quite a few people who aggressively promote themselves. You know, so, so, so. So, what makes a poem? Like, what makes a poet? Rather, can one become a poet, or is it that one should have it within you? You know, how does one I become think, a poet? I think there's a uh, there's there's a poet in everyone. There's mm -hmm. a bit a bit of a, a poet in everyone. I mean, a poetry. Uh, I think in many ways it's like it's like it's like music. You know, you you you. Uh, but not uh, everybody can sing, you know. No, you, exactly. But but everyone understands the language of music. Right. 
uh, understands, and you know, it, it, I'm sure everyone is passionate about music. You know, so for, it's not just a tune. Mm -hmm. When it comes to poetry, maybe it's not just a tune what you hear, but also, uh, also, also the lyrics mm -hmm. actually. You know, the words. You know, so it's a bit like poetry, uh, 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 and uh, I feel that poetry is for everyone, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, and and all you need is is. I mean, you, I think one should not jump to conclusions about poetry. That poetry is only for people who are dreamers, you know, uh, heads always in the, <laughs> in the clouds, you know. Uh, you need a little goodwill, and uh, I think uh, everyone can 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 uh, can enjoy poetry, if not write poetry. Yeah. In, one in, has to be passionate. One has to be that passionate. That passion comes out in exactly. the form of poems, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, you have to be passionate about. Whatever it can be, nature, it can be mm -hmm. your people, it can be the society at large, it can be anything. Mm -hmm. So, where do we find Robin S. and Nangom in a few years from now? What other avenues, what other arenas will he be chartering more for all of us? Well, uh, it is. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's it's difficult, but. Uh, um, uh, as as I mentioned, uh, you know, you know, for me now it it is trying to do more of the difficult thing, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, I've been thinking of uh, putting my poems together in in some kind of a uh, collected, you know, edition. Mm -hmm. I don't know the, le the you know the rest will leave it to I think <laughs> fate you know uh, can I yes read yeah, a little we, we would like to wish yeah we really wish you a <laughs> lot I mean you are a little uncertain but we are very certain of you you know we know that you will really travel much more in your you know journey in poetry much more than you think you wa you will actually but today this conversation we would like to end with something that you are very close you know, yeah, close this, to this is a recent poem and uh, we, we, we've been talking about tragedy and pain mm -hmm. and this poem is inspired by the by the picture of uh, this boy uh, who was drowned okay Ailan Kurdi I, I, if you remember mm -hmm. the Syrian boy you know who, right, you know right. and uh, mm -hmm. and 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 the picture uh, went uh, viral okay and uh, you know uh, and people all over the world have, have reacted to that to that tragedy. And this is how the poem goes. Understanding. Okay. Um, I can understand on this virtual day, even without smelling, let alone touching it. So I'll not say a word about the sea giving up a toddler. I can even understand this groundswell of pity, as if humanity was testing the waters of feeling. After adapting a short, brackish tragedy, despite pleas from the gentlest mourner not to use the image of drowning, but only remember a child's smile. In an age whose only metaphysical worry is what can be saved, trees, animals or children, for instance, late after the mocking ecstatic destruction. Uh, because I remember I had, uh, uh, you know, I have, have these lines, despite pleas from the gentlest mourner not to use the image of drowning, but only remember a child's smile, you know. His grandmother had uh, pleaded, you know, not, mm -hmm. to, not to circulate, right. you know, that, the, the, that uh, image of the boy, of the drowned boy, you know. Uh, you know but uh, remember happier times, you know, mm. uh, other, other photographs when he is seen smiling, you know. Right. But of course, no one, no one uh, <laughs> paying any heed to it. Yeah, right, right. Anything, any, and any other a shorter poem that you would like to share with us as we just wind up this conversation? Okay, with you? yeah. Uh, and this is about Shillong, and this is a, this is a, a very recent poem. I've been thinking about the changing contours of Shillong, you know, okay. uh, because when I came here, I didn't I didn't really 
feel it. Maybe again, it the undercurrents were there. You know, I mean, it, it was there, but I, I didn't feel it. And I, I mean, I was very. I, I mean, I, I remember the only happy days. You know. Uh, 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 I think this is the change of Shillong, and because we can we can see a helicopter hovering <laughs> over us, you know, and quite silencing this conversation that we're trying to have. Yet yes. this is one of the change. I mean, in our childhood, I never found a helicopter yes. so often true, as much true. as I find we it. We've run now. out of our of our, of our rooms to to, <laughs> to watch a helicopter. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, this may seem a little cynical, but I think uh, this reflects uh, uh, the, 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 the the present the present uh, you know uh, uh, reality you know you know so uh, Shillong without a worthy memory, I have lost nothing in this city. Even drunk, cadaverous ghost on the road can never take me back to the town swept away with my blue student skies. A quiet man with a snow line on his head, whose little, whose little boy's locks shone with the ceremony of the town's colonial birth. In his wind sail trousers today, looks out at the new master's lake from that odd in-between remembrance, holding on to the spiked support and watching the placid waters with a few dull boats nudging lilies blooming at a corner and mourns what this town has forfeited amidst the overpowering smell of a rotting animal. Only a few delusional survivors, the dated opticians, and unscrupulous druggist come liquor sellers are willing to be dispossessed of their first winter's memory. When I begin to berate people again, I repossess life in the city. All right. So I think uh, that's it. Uh, we have been able to, you know, understand a part of you, a small part of you, you know, you are so much more and uh, time is not with us really to be able to understand. Perhaps another occasion, another such a sitting will allow us to, you know, understand your poems, to understand from where it comes from. But for this moment, for this memory that we have shared and you have shared today with Durdash and Shalong, we are immensely, immensely grateful to you. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank for being you. a part of our literary program and we wish you many more you know wonderful days of writing ahead in your near future in the days to come thank you yeah. very much for yeah. speaking thank to you. us thank you most the pleasure is mine yeah. well then dear listeners and viewers well as i just said that's just a small part of our guest today who has honored this program as uh, we just had a one-on-one -on -one, one conversation with him our guest today by the name robin s nangom i hope you have enjoyed this conversation, have understood, you know, what all he has uh, tried to share with us, the pain, the love, the excitement, the challenges, everything that has encompassed him to be what he is today. Thank you very much for this uh, time of yours and we hope that you will join us next time again when we will be back with you with another of our guests. Bye-bye from the two of us out there.